I'm delighted to say Tommy Walsh is back because the hurling is back this weekend. Tommy, good morning to you. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Jer. Good morning, Shane. How excited are you about the return of the league? Is it is it like full bore? Yes, finally, intercounty action is back. Or are you like ah, not quite there? What are you? What's how how high up is the Tommy dial? Yeah, well, listen, it's the the joy of the the split season, I suppose, Jerry. We haven't seen championships since last July. Um, I was at Kilkenny played awfully in the the Welsh Cup over in Callan, full house over in Callan there the first or second week of January. Um, went over to Rat Downey then they were playing Leash in the next round nearly a full house again over Rat Downey now I missed the the, the, the the one under the lights and something else on on the Saturday night but you know a sold out game below for a Welsh Cup final 14,000 people in below in Wexford Park like it's I think it's really after working out so far listen this was reviewed year after year but the split season seems to be after work in regards you know encouraging people to go to the games encouraging people to follow the inter-county the razzmatazz that's going with there was fireworks and everything down in Wexford Park so listen I think so far so good everyone's really excited you know you're fresh it's so long since you've seen these inter-county guys like looking at the National League starting this weekend Ger, the six new managers uh, in the Lee McCarthy Cup as far as I can see like it, there's massive change there's two managers Wexford and Galway they're only in their second year so there's huge freshness in, in all counties there's huge eagerness to see what will the new managers bring to the game so I think this this National League will all be able to find out about the managers as much as the players. I was definitely uh, of the view in, in recent years that the league had completely diminished in terms of responsibility and um, uh, or like uh, the, the bit where you could apply what you see in the league to championship later on for various reasons. But then because this is the first proper year of the shortened season, I do wonder if we need to maybe take more cognizance of the fact that if things go badly early, it's much more difficult for you to get it back on track. There's still some room for you to get it back on track and obviously Munster and Leinster Championship is all that matters when the end of the year, that's what we'll be talking about. But if if you don't start well, it's going to be hard to recover. Yeah, well, I don't know how we agree with that, Ger. Um, I, I would say maybe in past years before the round robin, that may be the case. But like you say, you look at Watford and Cork, they were in last year's league final and... Um, you know, it didn't go too well for me in the summer, really. Like, Watford only won one game out there, round robin, after winning the league and winning it convincingly. Um, but what I do think is, it's all about finding players. Like, listen, I, I understand what you're saying. If you're going through a bad run, you've no players, I suppose, showing up their hands that pick me for a championship, then you're starting to get worried. But if you're only winning, losing the match, be a pint or two, but you find a new corner forward, you find a new centre forward, two or three players, maybe that were out of form last year, suddenly building that, that rich vein of farmer, their confidence is back, their mojo is back. Well, then you're going places. So I think the league now is probably more important to find players and not necessarily win, but I agree with you on that point. Maybe, you know, your your farm is maybe, if, if you start off poorly, maybe it's going in the right direction up towards the top. But I don't think that if you have a bad start in the league, that will have much of an impact on, on championship. Because there's two different groups. Like you look at the Division 1, you have Antrim, Kilkenny, Tipperary, Leash, Clare and Westmead. And towards the second uh, Division 2, you have Wexford, Galway, Cork, Limerick, Water and Dublin, which you would see is probably a far more difficult group. Yeah. So it might be, you know, it might be easier to get a win in one, you know, in Division 2, you mightn't get as many wins. And uh, But if you're finding players, Ger, um, that's what it's all about come championship because, you see, um, you go back to maybe 1000 and, say the, the 2000s, up to as far as probably 2014, 15, you could win in All Ireland from maybe May to September, playing four matches. Now you have to play probably five or six matches in, in five or six weeks. So the, 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 you know it has changed um, how you can treat this league. Like you know when we were winning leagues back in the two thousands, you could have six weeks off before the championship, so you could go you know full throttle for the league, and you'd have six weeks back to the clubs for two or three weeks to freshen up and. You know, I suppose regain that freshness that is needed for for championship hurling when when you know intensity is at its highest and the pressure is at its highest. Towards if you will say run off a big league now, play five or six games, you know, especially in that division what division two um, against all the top teams, probably big huge crowds. Where I'd say will come to these matches. The intensity will be unbelievable. Then you've only a week or two off before championship, and you're not just going into a knockout year. You're going into a full round robin again. Um, just cast your mind back to Watford. What a brilliant end to the league they had, semi-final and final. 
you know, they were scoring goals, scoring points. Uh, they looked like they're, you know, probably people were saying at the time they were the best team in Ireland, even though Limerick were after doing, you know, uh, winning three All Irelands in four years, they're after doing the two in a row. People were tipping Watford. They went out and had a kind of a shaky enough start against Tipperary, although they won it. In the, in the months around Robin but then got beaten in a great match against Limerick and then just the, the wheels came off the cart so I, I do think more than ever it's a time of, it's it's time for time in your run really more than Anton but at the same time it's not like a light switch you can't just turn up to this league and, and not try because you can't just switch it on come championship but I think it is all about rotating around your players and finding players is there a sense of, that's certainly a good point, Tommy. Is there a sense though of, of shadow boxing to a degree in the in the league? Because as you say, like in the provincial round robin era, none of the league finalists that year have later played in the All Ireland final. So clearly there's something there that, that teams that peak in the league that don't necessarily carry it on into championship. Yeah, um I would say I agree with your second point. It's definitely not about peaking in the league because it's just too intense. It's like nearly a Premier League now. Like, say, if you have six or seven, get into the league final, you could have six, seven, eight matches. Then go on and you have five or six in the round robin. That's 11 or 12 matches over a short period of time. So that's very, very intense. And the ability to keep it going with, with, with the panels they have, because most teams will be probably picking, even though they have a panel of 30, I'd say more often than not, they'll be picking off probably 20 players, really, in and out for, 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 for those games. So I think it's very difficult to do that to keep at your, the, you know, the, at the top of your game for so long. So as opposed to shadow boxing, I just think it'll be a time for, if you play a player for two or three games, you give him a rest for a, a game or two, then bring him on again. So say if you have 20 players in your mind to start come championship, you know, you might be playing so many of them together with some of the subs, then you switch it around. So they're kind of, you know, you don't play all the strong lads together in one match, then bring on all the subs, uh, Shane, in, in, in the next match, and then they get beat. I would say kind of mixing and matching really. It's a brand new era for Kilkenny. What is the feeling like when you're at those matches in, in Callan? Um, what are people excited about? What are they a bit apprehensive about? What's the, the general vibe around the place? Yeah, I suppose true. the big question is, uh, right, Cody's got after so long. He won 11 All-Ireland Finals, uh, All-Ireland Championships. He won numerous Leinster Championships, numerous uh, Welsh Cups, like he, leagues. You know, he won it all. And this is a new era. Like you're talking about you know, after Mikko went, after Alex Ferguson went, um, you know, after Jim Gavin went, like, what's going to happen when these great managers leave? And listen, to Kenny, they're after putting a good guy in there, like uh, Derek Ling, uh, Gerald, like, you know, the saying in sport, like, uh, nice guys finish last. I never agreed with that. Um, I think they come in all shapes and forms. Like, winners, they have characteristics that are probably common between them all. And one of them is, especially as a manager, that you can inspire players just to believe and that you want to be champions. Whether if that's in Ireland, that's when the Leinster Championship of League in all Ireland. Um, it's to inspire the players that they believe maybe they could become from a junior club or an intermediate club, that they're good enough to play um, at the top level, the elite level of sport, because this is as elite as, uh, as professional sport is now. They're putting in so much time. They're seven days a week now, Chair. And Derek Ling has that, and he's a huge work ethic. I remember him as a player. He, he was inspiring in a quiet way. A lovely fella, but would inspire it because he, he was a role model. You tried to follow his, 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 the way he carried himself. And, you know, like when he was starting off with Kilkenny, he wasn't the Derek Ling. Like he was only after starting to make the under-21 uh, team. And he really he was only starting on, on the road to where he became great uh, as regards Kilkenny midfielders. And he had to sacrifice a lot, you know, career-wise. He was supposed to be up the country. He came back because he wanted to make the Kilkenny team. And, uh, and he did it. So this guy is tough. This guy is a winner. He was a selector with Kilkenny when they won all Irons in 14 and 15. He was a manager of his own club, the Emeralds, when they won another 21 championship probably 10 or 12 years ago. He was manager of, of the Kilkenny under-20 under 20 team last year that won the All-Ireland. And they're after losing, I suppose, the year before and possibly the year before that. So he's made a tough stuff, this guy. And um, I think that's what is needed coming in because... You know, the aftermath of, of Brian Cody and all that. Does he have the players? Yeah, I think he does. You know, he'll have seven or eight Bally Hale lads come back into in, into play. Keen Kenny had a great year last year. I was watching him over in, in Callan and again in um in Rat Downey. I think actually I think it was just Rat Downey he was playing. He's gone huge. He's a small guy. Mickey Comfort is the strength and conditioning guy there, Jared, at the moment, and he's putting in huge work the last couple of years. The guys are gone, you know, and you have to buy into the modern game. These guys are gone huge. They're putting in 
putting on kilos of, of muscle, Paddy Deegan, Park, like young and old, they're all doing it. They're all after buying into it. And uh, Mickey Comfort is, is key to that. And they do have players like Billy Trent is coming from the under-21 team, um, Garrod Dunn, um, you know, young Mile in the Borough, Borough have a few lads in the backs, big strong town club here in town and a lot of strong players that have a lot of underage success. So, yeah, listen, it's exciting times and huge crowds all their matches so far. And what I like about the Welsh Cup this year was, you know, in previous years, they might be playing the under-21 team or the under-20 team and, you know, it's much more difficult for a lad to, to pop his hand, but when you're mixing in the young lad with the guy that has all the experience, the Killian Buckleys and the Hugh Lawlers, the Mikey Butlers, then they have a better chance because they're only kind of filling in a gap. They might get a pass and drive it down the field or score a few points, but they're not the main fellas. So I think the, the, the league hopefully will be much the same, a mix of, of experience with, with youth. No, I was going to say, the, the, uh, the return of Davy Fitz is another one that's kind of got us talking Tommy and anytime Davy Fitz opens his mouth we all listen um, yeah. th- there was an interesting one at the weekend like the Central Council voting against the Marifornia uh, the return of the Marifornia onto the pitch and uh, delegates voted against it Davy has already spoken out against this um, he was saying it's a missed opportunity doesn't reflect management's need to speak to players during games does he have a point? I suppose when Davy Fitz talks as I say we're all we're all there to hear what he has to say yeah uh, so Shane he the reason people listen is because he has won so much, you know. Mm-hmm. Like he, you know, he was in Clare, he won an All Ireland, won a National League. He was in Watford previously, ten years ago, and he say from 2008 till 2011, he won Munster championships. Like this guy, your Six Mile Bridge, he has won club championships. Like, and what he has done below in Wexford, you know, is incredible. Um, like you remember, Wexford Hurling was on its, was on the floor, you know maybe 10 or 10 years ago or that, Liam Dunn came in and Liam Dunn was probably one of the single most important um, people that was put into a job down Wexford when he was implemented as the manager because Liam Dunn as a player had a phenomenal work ethic. He was a tough man. He was a, a guy that loved the game. He was from a great club in our Larka when, uh, you know, I'd say they won their first championship in 94, but it wasn't the Leinster club championship that year, but I think that was around their first, but our Larka became a great club in Wexford hurling after that. But, he came from, you know, a love of Wexford and a love of hurling to put in a foundation, Wexford, that, listen, lads, hurling needs to be number one in your life here. You know, you go on holidays, you go to America and all this, this comes two and three. Hurling has to be one if, if you want to be on this panel. And he put in a foundation in Wexford hurling that was absolutely instrumental for when Davy Fitz came. And Davy brought the razzmatazz, Davy brought the enthusiasm, the excitement. And I thought the legacy... That Davy left in Wexford, he won the cha- the Leinster Championship. Was it against Kilkenny? It was there sixty thousand at that Leinster final. No, yeah. huge numbers. And um, the legacy he has left, I thought, was seen in the Welsh Cup final. A sold out Welsh Cup final between <laughs> Wexford and Kilkenny. Fourteen thousand people in Wexford Park. And Davy, you know, had had a huge a huge part to play in all of that because the the coaching that's going in in schools down in in Wexford at the moment in the clubs they're putting in an unbelievable effort. And um, that's why people listen to Davy because he does bring huge interest, huge enthusiasm, no matter where he goes. He's back in Watford now. He's already said it, Shane, that they haven't, that they won, they played 12 round robin. I know they got to the All Ireland final there two years ago. That was during COVID, it was the knockout championship. But during the, the round robin Munster championship, where they played 12 games, they've only won one. So his ambition is supposed to change all that. And um, I think to get Munster will be his main aim this year uh, as a, a building block, I suppose, for the future. Mayor Foran is then saying, see, the, the more, most difficult thing at the moment is um, you can't hear anything. The crowds are so big at these games, especially when you come to the latter stages of the, the league and championship when the grounds are full. Very hard to, to you know, I suppose, tell players anything. And, um, you know, you've seen what happened. This wasn't the, the club final with Kilmacud and, and, um, you know, the Glen, possibly if there was a mayor for you, and, you know, he would have been able to tell lads that you're on and you're off. Because I know myself coming on the cl- club last year as a sub, like, it is mayhem, you know. You're coming on and the lad coming on isn't really listening to him because he's so excited to come on, he just wants to score or get the ball. And the lad coming off probably is disappointed. He's in no mood to go around giving instructions and where lads are playing. So, no, oh, maybe he has a point to play that the mayor for him should be still there and, I, but on the GA's defence, you have to say it, the reason they probably got rid of the mayor of Forney was there was lads, weren't they? Sta- especially in the football, they were standing out in positions <laughs> yeah. trying to cough pace and that. So, 
they probably deserve some honesty from the the, the, the team and the players as well. So, you know, it's a hard one, all right. Mm. Um, uh, we'll talk about Limerick over the course of the season. Obviously, L- lots to talk about. Um, They've had some addition, they've had some subtraction so far, at least for the league anyway. We'll we see how that all plays out. But what about Liam Cahill at tip? Because it didn't end brilliantly at Waterford, given that we were all saying that they were genuine All-Ireland contenders after the league last year. And yet here he is back in the job that many felt like he should have had earlier. So, you know, what's for you won't pass you. Uh, is this the right time, the right man at the right moment? Yeah, we well, see what all these managers will always tell you is, when 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 it co- when when it comes, it's hard. It's hard to. Um... Can you hear me there? We Jared? can. Sorry, yeah, we're there. still here. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. So when 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 the, do- the calling does come, Jer, it's hard to turn it down. Like if he just turns it down now, does he is he guaranteed to get it again in four or five years' time? Maybe when these young lads are, you know, twenty six, twenty seven. Pro- you know, you you just don't know. So you nearly have to take it when when, when the chance comes along. I think we sell Tipperary in a transitional period. Um, like, you know, you have Noel McGrath, John McGrath, you have, you know, Ronan Marr, you have Cottle Barrett. So all these guys are coming to the latter stages of their career, Seamus Callan. And then, but they're still probably the main fellas on that team. Towards You need the young fellas really to, to, to stand up and be your number three, your number six, your number 11, number 14. And them guys still have to prove themselves and they have to probably show up and you'll be hoping in this league maybe Liam Cahill, like he will have the confidence in these players because I suppose when Liam Sheedy was there beforehand, Liam Sheedy had the confidence in the class of 2010 because they had won the championship before in the All-Ireland. They again won the All-Ireland in his first year back. So how was he to turn his back on them players that have never let him down? And so he's kept faith with all of those players from 2010. Towards Liam Cahill, you would imagine, He's won All Ireland's under twenty and under twenty one. He's won minor All Ireland's with a different group of Tipperary players. So you'd imagine he will have faith and he will know the strengths and the weaknesses of them players, and he will probably try to put them into in, in, into big roles. I see Michael Breen in the Welsh Cup has already gone back corner back. He spent most of his underage career in the backs, you know. So it will be interesting. Like I was looking at their team for the Munster League, not a lot of their players. Their names jumped out at me that I knew them straight away. So over this. League, I suppose we will learn a lot more about Tipperary. We didn't even mention Owen Kelly as part of the backroom team at uh, Waterford with Davy. There's a lot of subplots for us to get stuck yeah. into this weekend. Looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. Yeah, and uh, you know that will be. It's probably not as bad when you're a coach. Um, you're probably more in the background, but it it like over in the Premier League and in in in, in football now, you have to go off and do your badges. And it's gone so professional. Like it's not just about turning up and you choose night, Thursday night, do two or three drills and play a match, and then pick your t- team on the back of a fag box that Friday evening. <laughs> like them, day, them days are gone. Like and Owen Kelly going to Watford, Henry going to to Galway, me all done. Who you know he was in Tipperary before he was in Galway to win the All Ireland in 2017. He was with Tipperary for two years with Eamon O'Shea. Um, Davy Fitz went to Watford before going back to Clare to win his All Ireland. Like it's nearly like your coaching badge, Jer, where you have to go off and learn how to deal with physios, how to deal with you know dietitians, how to deal with the doctors, how to deal with the players. Like you, you know, you can't turn up and just be a dictator to these players anymore. There's so much going on in their lives other than that. They've careers, um, you know, and the family life and. So there's so much to learn in the job now. I think the, the likes of Owen going to Bar, it, 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 it's it's just it's a learning curve, really, you know. And they're trying to, I suppose, learn the trade really before maybe to come back home and uh, you know take on the big job. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Like uh, all those, we didn't even talk about those. Like um, that's why that's why these games. I I know. I, I get the point you're making that it's actually about making sure at the end of the league you feel like you've got a panel ready to do battle in the provincial championships, but. Uh, it does feel like there's going to be big stories coming out of this and how teams respond to those. Like Limerick were were narky through the league last year and they talked about it. You know, they, they were definitely getting sucked into battles and I think they, they definitely learned from that over the course of the rest of the year. But maybe it was just because they weren't fully fit and they were getting caught in a way that later on in the year they didn't. So, I don't know. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's, it's hugely exciting. You know, Limerick last year, sure everyone was questioning their credentials, whether they the hunger to, to come back or the discipline to come back and, and do the three in a row and they answered emphatically like you know and 
it's going to be interesting. Like they're going to have Limerick are going to have to find players there. I think to like so they're they're a great team now, but now they want to go to the top of the pile with the Kerry team, the football team of the the, the late seventies and eighties, the Kilkenny team of the two thousands, the Dublin football team. You know the Manchester United, these team teams, the New England Patriots that are around forever, winning championships. You know over a course of 10, 12 years. But to do that, you remember Jim Gavin when he was at Dublin, like Bernard Rogan. He would have made every team in the country at the time was a sub. Um, you know, did all these players with strings of all Ireland medals subs on their team at the latter stages? Because Jim Gavin knew. That to win an All Ireland, he had to keep freshening up to keep it going long term. He had to keep bringing in new young players like Conor Callan. He wasn't around at the start. Was Kieran Kilkenny probably wasn't at the start. Pat Kilroy's team, but came along then and drove it to new heights again. And I think for this Limerick team, like they've won now four All Irelands in five years, but you know much the same team. I think the thirteen of the team last year in the twenty twenty two All Ireland final, the start of two thousand and eighteen All Ireland final. So. These guys have been on the road a long, long time. And I think if they want to drive it on for another couple of years, three or four years, um, they, they will have to find new players that they can... They don't have to find five new players, but even one or two new players that they can put in on the team that, you know, suddenly it just keeps it going, keeps it going. Because as that team gets older, they're putting in huge effort, there's huge work going in the gym, there's huge mileage going on the clock. So that can't go on forever. Yeah. And the only way that it can go on forever is when you have new blood. Yeah. Who's going to be there? TJ Reid or Walter Walsh? Tommy, great to have you back. Thanks a million. Thanks, lads. Best of luck. That's uh, Tommy there giving us some thoughts ahead of the weekend return of the Allianz Hurling League.